Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Barr, and welcome to a new Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. So happy to have you here with us. And a couple of questions to start out with today. How long have you been doing business with your current bank? Hmm, think about that one for a minute. Now think about this. Are you happy with the services you receive from your current bank? I am so happy <laughs> to welcome in Chanel Bessette. She is a banking expert with Nerd Wallet and Chanel. This could not be better timing. I have a feeling this is a topic many people are considering right now. Yeah, absolutely. This year has uh, seen many changes to the banking industry. So it's a great time to be looking around at what your bank is offering and what other banks could offer for you. Okay. So what is it about the timing right now? What is really kind of piquing our interest in, in considering maybe opening a new account at a different bank, having multiple accounts? What is it that is really drawing our attention to this? Well, the number one thing for this year is that inflation has been quite high, which means the Fed has been reacting by raising interest rates. And while that does make it more expensive to borrow money for things like mortgages or loans, it also is raising interest rates on uh, consumer deposit accounts like checking savings and CDs. Okay, so let's get into that. <laughs> if you are considering um, wanting to look around, obviously there's a couple of signs for you to consider, and, and you mentioned it. Let's start with savings accounts. Um, I want to tell you right now, I know my savings account, and this is probably bad, it's only at 0.08%. Is there better options? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so high yield savings accounts right now are up in the range of two or even 3%. Oh dear. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, which, uh, you know, it, compared to inflation, that might not sound like a lot, but compared to how interest rates have been on, on bank accounts, yeah. um, that is stellar compared to what it's been in the last few years of the pandemic. No kidding. How do we look for that? How, how do you do you do, I guess, research, educate yourself and try to find one that uh, is a little better than the 0.08% I'm getting right now? Yeah, absolutely. There are all kinds of keywords you can type into Google. Um, you can look high yield, high interest. Um, you know, savings accounts with good interest, basically any combination of those kinds of terms is going to result in quite a few searches of um, roundups, lists, or even bank pages where uh, banks are advertising these rates. Oh, great. Okay. Why not? Right. Oh my gosh. How about extra fees? This honestly seemed to be such a normal thing um, over the years, but now are extra fees going away? And is that something else to look for? Yes, definitely. Um, so it's pretty common these days to have no monthly fees on most bank accounts. Um, mm. And so that's something we've always recommended from the get-go is if you're looking for a new bank, look for one with no monthly fees. Um, but I'm happy to say that we're also seeing a lot of banks getting rid of or reducing their overdraft fees, mm. um, which is a huge thorn in the side of many consumers. It's something that tends to kind of kick you while you're down. Um, mm. You're already running low on funds in your account, and then suddenly you're hit with a fee that could be $35 or, you know, you could get that multiple times a day. So it ends up being hundreds of dollars um, just for one overdraft. It can be um, very frustrating. So I think banks have realized how competitive the industry is right now for customer business. And so by reducing those fees or eliminating them altogether or creating more ways to avoid getting them to begin with, uh, it's making it uh, really great for consumers now who are searching for new banks. Oh, that's wonderful. And I love the let's get rid of that overdraft fee thing. So there really could be a fee free account. You could actually find those now. Yeah, at least for the major fees. Um, sometimes there are <sighs> banks who have things like dormant account fees, where if you don't use your account for a certain period of time, then they might charge you a fee. Um, but you know, if this is a regular bank that you're using all the time, then yeah, you can avoid uh, quite a few fees these days. Oh, that is terrific to hear. Um, how about this part of it? Uh, customer service. So many of the friends I talk with, we all say it's kind of a lost art. <laughs> how can we demand or maybe find better customer service when it comes to dealing with a bank? Well, one thing about the pandemic over the last few years is that it really propelled forward the desire for remote customer service um, yeah. for a lot of businesses, not just banks. But for banks in particular, um, there are people who don't want to handle cash or who don't want to go into branches. And, and uh, banks have responded to that over the last few years by making it much easier to get the kind of services that you would traditionally get in a bank uh, available uh, remotely. So a lot of banks have offered online chat, um, which is available oh. um, 
you know, sometimes you have to log into your account. Other times you can just get information about a new account. Um, there are a lot of banks that have social media accounts that they use for customer service. And, uh, you know, say, say you don't really need to go into a branch, but you still need to withdraw cash or deposit mm-hmm. cash. Um, there are lots of banks that are teaming up with uh, n- nationwide ATM networks that make it a lot easier for you to find an ATM near you to handle those services. That is amazing. And obviously, I, I'm really enthused about the online chat thing, because honestly, you, you call somebody on the phone and you rarely get help that way anymore. So this sounds like another really important issue for people who are considering where they might want to go banking. Definitely. Um, yeah. And one thing I will note on that is uh, chat can be really great, especially if you get um, somebody who you're, you're able to talk to. Right. Um, there are a lot of banks that are doing uh, chat bots instead of chat with a human. Okay. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're researching the bank. Just, uh, you know, if that's something that's important to you, just make sure that bank is offering actual real life customer service with you via chat. <laughs> oh, excellent. And, and maybe even just better customer service hours sometimes would be helpful. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. There are plenty of banks that are expanding uh, beyond, you know, beyond weekday, Monday, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, and they're doing things in the evenings or earlier in the day or even on weekends. Oh, that's terrific. Okay. So finally, this last one, uh, kind of, you know, tying it into a bank and maybe your own account. How does wanting a loan, how can this actually be impacted if you're looking for a good interest rate, but where should you go and what should you really be doing? Do you have to stay with your current bank? Yeah, that's uh, definitely a good point to consider if you're thinking of switching banks, because if you have a longstanding customer relationship with your bank, uh, that typically means that the bank knows that, you know, you're able to um, stick to bill payments or that you do get direct deposited uh, an income on a regular basis. They can kind of look at your financials and uh, see if you've been a responsible customer. And that might make them a little bit more willing to A, offer you a loan and B, offer you a loan at a good interest rate. Um, So that is something to consider if you're deciding to jump from your current bank to a new one. Um, But if that is something you're considering in the near future, something you could do is keep your old account open while you continue to search for a new bank and just have multiple bank accounts for the time that you um, are looking for a loan. And, uh, you know, it might be a little bit more to manage and that's something to consider. (laughs) And you might want to keep in mind that, you know, your original bank or your new bank might have requirements about direct deposit to avoid fees or or Ah. things like that. So you need to make sure that you're meeting all the requirements that avoid fees for each of the banks. But if you're able to manage it, then that could mean a really great low interest loan for you. Oh my gosh. Okay. So it really is a thing now. People are shopping around and maybe have a savings account here and maybe are banking with checking over here. And I mean, really, what is the bottom line? What, what do you suggest? Um, Number one thing always is uh, uh, competitive research, just making sure that you're looking around and shopping for the best deals for you. Um, And don't just look at interest rates. Like, yes, that is a good thing to look for, but you know, make sure that bank has the kind of customer service that you want um, and that they have, you know, good reviews and that they seem to take care of their customers. All those things will help you avoid major headaches um, that you could potentially get from switching to a new bank. Oh my gosh. Thank you. This is a terrific topic and uh, really, really interesting. Um, and honestly, I want to also open this up. If, if you have questions and you're listening to this podcast, don't be afraid to get a hold of me and I'll be happy to ask our experts, people like Chanel, that can get those answers for us. Chanel, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, Chanel Bassett. She is a banking expert with Nerd Wallet. And this is another new Pennywise podcast for you. We're new every single week. And again, we'd love to hear from you. Ask us your money, finances, whatever banking questions. Thanks a lot for being here. I'm Terry Barr, and we'll talk with you next time.